going on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of love and hip-hop hollywood this is season six episode seven fed up somebody fed up but we know it ain't lyrical hmm before we get into the review if you have not done so just check on head subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content i want to remind you guys to shop andrea's clothing coupon code will be down below um and also remind you guys to go to soundcloud check out my kinfo she out here grinding kobe easy run it up listen i'm finished listen listen Go check her out. Because Auntie said so, damn it. Um, look here. I just want to apologize. Yes, this episode review is late. You want to know why? Because this season is boring. That's just what it is. It's boring. And then not only that, I'm going to keep it real. Can I keep it real with y'all? Auntie been having a migraine out of this world. You know, I told y'all, if you see my other videos, I've been dealing with anemia my whole life. And here recently, my iron levels have been super low and I've been super tired, exhausted, migraine out of this world. And um, and that um, combined with the fact that I'm trying to come down on so much caffeine, not from sodas, but from um, coffee, cause coffee is, coffee is my ride or die, man. Cold coffee, warm coffee, coffee, coffee. I love me some coffee. And 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 it's just, this has been calling me, man. And it's hard trying to come up off. It's just been calling me. So, I do apologize for bringing this review, uh, review late. But nonetheless, you know auntie going to make it good and entertaining for you. Even though it's boring as hell. But hopefully y'all are ready for the review. Because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so the episode picks up where it left off last time. Lyrica in A1. Outside this nice ass white neighborhood. Being just as black as they want to be. Oh, I ain't getting to what I'm drinking tonight. I said I was going to make a habit of letting y'all know that. Auntie and Lil Ratchet tonight. I got some Kool-Aid and some vodka. Real ass, give up, that up. Yeah. Call it what you want to, it's good as hell. Hmm. Ah, ooh, it's staying right there. Anyways, so they outside this little nice white neighborhood being just as black and ghetto as they want to be. She out there yelling, you guys are so They still out there arguing over Summer Bunny, Winter Ferret, whatever hell you want to call her. Lyric is pissed off. She got her little overnight bag that's empty as hell because she just carrying it like this. Girl, you ain't got nothing in that damn bag. She got the bag. Pam. Oh, Mama Pam. Baby Mama Pam built like a nice, thick-ass sack of Sunday laundry <laughs> in the summertime. Goes up to her in her little two-piece with the pants up to here. You can't be believing everything everybody say. You believe everything everybody say, you weak. You gonna believe everything everybody say. Y'all, Mama Pam, Mama Pam, Mama Pam, Mama Pam. I can't take you serious. Not when you got on this old nasty ass Pamela Greer mop on your head with these full whole ass earrings in your nose and in your lip and your pants higher than the raging seas. Lord, that woman's pants was bad up to her neck. I know she, I know she tasted the threading in them pants. They were too high and you was built too wrong. And two, two wrongs don't know, Pamela no. Your son should have told you that. Lyrica mad. She big mad. She like, I dead ass been a good woman. I dead ass been in the house. I dead ass been with him for eight years. I dead ass had a whole baby. So what? So what? You ain't going nowhere. They out there just being loud. He really don't seem like... 
I mean, he seemed like he cared, but he was just like, no, don't go. Hey, man, come to the house, man. Quit tripping. I don't know if it's, he was tired of filming. He done been through this a million and one times, and he knows she ain't going nowhere, or if he just really didn't care. But either way it go, he was sending his mama to go and, and deal with Lyrica. Now, Mama Pam, and all of her buildness, with her big scrawn back to the ass, was out there like, look here, Lyrica. Your baby in the house. You need to go in the house right now with your baby. She like, uh, uh, go get my baby. Can you go get my baby, please? It's not after you. It's just talking to me. No. But like, my Mama Pam was like, no, I'll watch him. He gonna stay here. You you ain't gonna go nowhere either, Lyrica. You gonna stay right here. Y'all. <sighs> Lyrica mad. She goes and gets in a little Uber or whatever and leaves. A1 and his... <laughs> tight ass shirt <laughs> y'all i can see what the boy had for breakfast in that tight ass damn shirt he went and got because she took off a ring she was mad she went and sat him down on the car and she left because she called herself being mad but y'all lyrica ain't going nowhere her in a one they yeah, lyrica ain't, i'm not even lyrica and them ain't going no damn where lyrica ain't going nowhere she just went and stayed some time over at a hotel for a little while um because later on we see that her mama comes and visit her her mom and her best friend sia comes and visit her she's staying at a hotel because she mad i think she probably depressed she just had a baby you and your husband just got off of cheating on each other then he goes and cheats on you again like maybe she dealing with postpartum or, or something i don't know but i don't care my a baby fresh brand new like that i'm not finna just pick up and leave and go to the hotel because I'm mad at my, my husband and leave my baby. No, because she left the baby with A1 and Mama Pam. Uh, no, no, ma'am. I would have to go and get my baby. Now, Big Lyric is telling her, like, she wants her to work it out, of course, for the, the sake of ocean. But at the same time, Big Lyric G, like, look here. You ain't going to leave his ass. He crazy, his mom crazy, his brother crazy, all of them crazy. Leave all they crazy asses. And then... A1, A1 been doing some weird shit lately. Just some weird, I didn't want to say shit, but he just been doing some weird shit lately. If y'all follow his ass on Instagram or you done seen anywhere on the social media, baby, he had got an old nasty Anita Baker do going on with his head, little chili bowl flat to the side with it. Girl, he look a damn mess. But anyways, you know, her mama and her best friend C are just basically telling her, like, her best friend C was like, I'm gonna stay here with you. I'm not going back to Atlanta until you find you a, an, an apartment here. I'm gonna help you. Whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Cha, they still together. Moving on. K. Michelle goes and meets with her lawyer because she has some concerns about her surrogate, Tone. Now, mind you, she met the surrogate I think when she was in Ikea, you in there looking for dresses and mattresses and shit, and you just so happened to see a female who had a slew of other kids. You um, seen that she was good with them kids, so you got to know her, and from there you decided to make her your surrogate. Like, where they do that at? Now, she said that um, Tone actually went online, and her and her boyfriend did this whole video about um, revealing that she is going to be the surrogate to K. Michelle. She says that, you know, imagine waking up the next day and the whole world knows who your surrogate is. Well, yeah, of course. You ain't get to know who the hell this female was before you actually met her. You met her in an Ikea. You flew her out to Hollywood or wherever the hell you was. You showed her a little bit of money. Um, you flew out her baby daddy and all her kids. And so they're like, oh, she got it like that. So uh, we finna let the world know. Whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. That's on you. Then Kay says that she says things like, um, you know, they want to raise the kids together. And, you know, um, the kids can play together. Some crap like that that she says. And like Kay says, you know, she doesn't want to be friends with her like that. She doesn't want to talk to her every day. Because she says that's another thing that Tone does. She wants to call her every day. She wants to have a relationship with her. And her lawyer is like, okay, well, on time out. If you are already having concerns like this now, then you just need to go ahead and pump the brakes and explore some other options. Now, the lawyer came cock-loaded and ready. He was like, I got another surrogate 
on standby just in case this one right here don't work out. I got another home girl that, you know, she already know what's good. She know this is business, this is a check, and her womb is ready to go. So you let me know if things don't work out with home girl. We got something else. Now Kay says um, she's gonna talk with Tone later. She wants to just basically clear the air and let her know what her concerns are, right? Before she meets with Tone, she actually meets uh, meets with Moniz. Moniz ends up coming to her house. Girl, Moniz got this big ass damn sea biscuit looking ass dog says it's a support animal support animal girl that thing is a beast he look like a horse he like he run for money uh uh that thing is big but she talks with Moniece um once she says um she had talked to Moniece since Moniece had brought up the idea of her and April going on that damn tour which I think is a dumb idea my dog on self but that ain't me child I don't say that's them so um, she tells Moniece that, you know, everything that her lawyer was saying about having the back of Sarah again, she tells Monique, um, she tells Moniece about what her concerns are with Tone. Now, Michelle, uh, K. Michelle reveals that it's humbling to her to be friends with a woman who's doing something that she can't do for herself. And so that's one of the real reasons why she doesn't want to get close to Tone and she doesn't want to be no friends with her. You should have let that girl know that from the jump. Don't sit on something like that and let it build up and build up and build up because everybody know how K. Michelle is. She's going to explode. Now, the minute that girl started saying something like, oh yeah, and the kids will be, no, no, no. You and your family, your kids, me and my child over around here. You didn't clarify that with her. You know, Kay says that she does love her kids and she knows that her family is depending on the money that she would receive from her being the surrogate for Kay Michelle. But Kay Michelle, like, Moniz brought up a valid point to her. We all know Moniz batshit crazy, but I like Moniz. I like Moniz kind of crazy because, hey, I'm a little crazy with damn self. But Moniz um, says her, she, like, she tells her, like, who, what is more important, her and her kids and her family, or you and your kids and, and your family, what's more important? I know you love her kids, and you know her kids are depending on this money, but at the same time, you have these concerns. Do you really want to be trapped in something like that that could turn out to be real ugly later? Like, no, nah, don't do nothing like that. Oh, and then another thing K. Michelle said, she said this girl boyfriend done asked her for a contract. Now, I was with K on that. Who the hell, excuse, scares me now? You ain't the daddy. You ain't even the husband. So what you asking for a damn contract for? Like, fool, go set your black ass down some damn well. So y'all, Spectacular, Fizz, J-Bug, and Ray J, they all go out and play pool, right? Now, Ray J says, detention on the tour, Millennium Tour is so thick you can cut it with a knife. I thought something was going to go down backstage. Talking about between Fizz and O. Now, we all know, y'all, Ray J got this messy female side of him. Ray, uh, Ray Nay, that's what I call him. Ray Nay come out, because he says stuff real messy, but without being messy, you know what I'm saying? Like when he had bought up who Summer Bunny was and Mr. Ray's listing party right in front of Lyrica, you know what I'm saying? Little stuff like that. So when they playing pool, Ray brings up to Fizz like, so, uh, I see you ball, uh, you had wifey, what you talking about, April? Now, Fizz starts to get upset. He's like, what are you talking about? Why do y'all keep saying that? Why do people try to make it more than what it is? If I say we just friends and she say we just friends, then it is what it is and it shouldn't be a problem. No, the problem is, is y'all is lying and it's pissing people off because you we see it clear as day in front of our damn eyes, but you want to sit here and play off of our intelligence and tell everybody that y'all are just friends. Now, Jay Boog's major concern is Whatever it is that y'all, you and your friend is doing, it's going to mess up the bag. It's going to mess up my monties. And I got kids. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to go over here and get this dog on money. But Fizz is like, whatever I'm doing shouldn't affect what's going on with the bag and this and the other. But Jay Boog lets him know. He didn't have discussions with, oh, yes, it does bother him. It bothers everybody. Now, Fizz is going to have the nerve to say, well, that's surprising to me because ain't nobody said nothing to me and O ain't said nothing to me. Why he got to come and say something to you? You know you in the wrong. You and April, big apple head ass, know that y'all are both in the wrong. Oh, I ain't got to come to you and say nothing to you, baby. Look here. In 2020, 
my New Year's resolution is that I get to the same level of unbotheredness and zero Fs given that Omarion is in. Baby, he ain't responded to a doggone thing that has been going on. You know what he been doing? He been driving his babies to school. He been all up on stage, touring, performing, doing cop weather and, and karate and all of this stuff all on Instagram. He been out there living his best life. All on some old left eye zen type stuff, like Dr. Stevy type stuff. He out there chilling. But meanwhile, y'all still sitting up here playing like we damn stupid. Jay Boog is like, look here. It really set everything off when you bought April to this last tour, this last show date. Now, the next show date going to be in Chicago. My thing is... Homegirl can't come backstage. I ain't saying she can't come to the show, but uh, she don't need to be coming backstage, throwing O off, because once he quit, ain't no more B2K, ain't no more Millennium Tour. That's going to mess up the bag for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So you need to go ahead and keep, keep your homegirl in check. Keep her on the leash. I ain't saying she can't come to the show, but the heck can't come backstage. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Now, later on, Fizz goes and uh, Fizz and April are going to have dinner. Now, he tells her what Jay Bug says and what, you know, the, the band and what everybody's concerns is. Because, you know, she's excited about the new tour. I mean, the tour that's coming up in Chicago because she said her whole family's going to be there. Her kids are going to be there. Her mom and dad, everybody going to be there. She's excited to go. Fizz tells her, like, look here, you just can't come backstage with it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else can come, but you can't. Because he let her know he got a lot of shit from the last time when you showed up at the last show. Man, we can't, can't be having all of that. You know, I got bills and shit like that. I can't be having you come to the show. Now, once again, it's pissing me off. Because she's like, well, what's the big deal? I don't understand what the big deal is. Heffa, if you don't see what the big deal is, then both of y'all need to be clocked over the head with a bag of fucking nickels. Because it couldn't be even, excuse me, Mika, it couldn't be no more doggone clear than, like, really? You really don't understand what's going on. They get on my nerves with that. People would respect them and would respect their relationship a lot more if you didn't lie about it. You lied about it this whole time just to drag it out on love and hip-hop when everybody already not like, come on, man. I'm sick of them, y'all. I'm about, I'm moving on from them, y'all. I'm about sick. I need some more damn liquor. Now, later on, April goes and has drinks with Zells in Paris and tells them what happened as well. How, <laughs> basically, it's telephone. Omarion don't let J-Bug know. J-Bug don't let Fizz know. Fizz don't let April know. Look here, have a... You can't come backstage, all right? You come to the show, you can bump, bump, bump with the rest of the patrons, but you can't bring your ass backstage. And that's just what it is. We got money to damn make. So Paris is like, look here, we feel like it's something that you're not saying anyway. And like Paris is saying, you supposed to be my home girl. If no, nobody else gonna get the truth, you gonna give me the truth, you know what I'm saying? Like, dang, like, come on, man. But anyways, from them, Zell tells them that um he was on he was being a little bit messy when he was on live with Winter Ferret when she was calling out A1 for cheating on Lyrica and how Lyrica was, you know, she was he just basically said that while he was on live, that um A1 ended up calling him and he got caught off guard from that. But he says that his loyalties are with Lyrica because he's closer with Lyrica, so he really didn't take it no further than that. He was just being messy for the moment until he got his ass caught. Now, later on, we see that April does invite Paris out to Chicago to go, you know, to visit Chicago. And plus, like I said, she was going to go to the tour when it was there, right? Now, they go out and they have a walk. Once again, Paris is like, look here, I'm your homegirl. What's really good with you and Fizz? Like, how how did all of this come about? Like, just tell me what's good. April still with this. She don't know why Omar y'all left her girl. Either you don't know you don't want to say, or I, I I believe you do know, but it's it's more to it. That's y'all personal business. You know what I'm saying? But hey. <laughs> I'm just trying to be like, oh, in and, and 2020, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to have his whole damn level is in. April goes into this whole thing about how Fizz saved her life. She was about to die because she was watching her kids. So he came to the house and babysat for her. 
while she took a nap. He stepped in and did what he was supposed to do. Y'all, and then, uh, uh, y'all, I'm sick of April and Fizz. I'm sick. They one of the main reasons that make it really hard for me to get through this review. I'm not gonna lie, just to get through watching the show. Just because I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't like, I, I'm just, I'm not feeling them. I'm not feeling them there, I said it, I'm sorry. I'm ready for the comments, but I'm not feeling them. Sorry. It is what it is, moving on from them. Y'all, so we got Apple Watts and Mr. Ray. She is on her way to go get her second set of labs done because she wants some tig old bitties, y'all. She wants some titties. She wants some titties. She says she tied in flapjacks. She ready to have some double D's, perky D's, and that's what she ready for. You know where she went and got her, um, where she get her titties done at? Down there, um, at the Colonnade Square. You know, the shopping plaza, Colonnade Plaza, Capital Plaza, right over there next to the Tofu Martin, the Shipley Donuts, and the O'Reilly's. Yeah. She going over there to get them titties done, right? Now, when they pull up, Mr. Ray was me all day. Girl, you get your titties done in a strip mall? In the middle of the mall? Baby, what is, what is the Yelp reviews on this? What letter do they have in the front window? Is it an A? What kind of establishment is this? She's going in for a second set of labs because the first time she went in, she was anemic, baby. Don't I know? And so she couldn't get anything done. So she was back. She got her lab work done this time. She made it something get my titty. I'm getting my titty. She was excited. So, anyways, lab work came back. She's good to go. She is getting local anesthesia done. She's awake the whole time. They're doing them titties. No, ma'am. Now, look here. Ain't no surprise. Once Auntie get a millionaire, hell, a good thousand now, I might get a little something, something done. But look here. I need to be knocked out. I need to be knocked the out. Okay? I need to be so knocked up out. When I wake up, I'm like, I want to be out of it. I just want to wake up snatched. I don't want to be awake during none of that shit. She awake the whole dog on time so she can sit up and look and see how they look. And then if it ain't, if they're too big, you can take them down too small. You can build, but she she awake the whole damn time. She damn near down on the table and look like they had to give her some smelling salt. Because as soon as they lift her up, um, do you like the way these look? She like, uh, I'm like, yeah. She passes out. Mr. Ray and her homegirl, her sister, it was her sister from the daddy that turned out that wasn't her daddy, but she still said that that's her sister, but it's probably like not her blood sister, but it's her sister, one of them type things. Anyways, she's there. Mr. Ray is there. They come in. They like, oh, girl, your titties look good. Oh, they so pretty. Oh, bitch, don't die. Hopefully, we see you when you come out. Why is my ponytail doing the most right now? Oh, bitch, you look cute, though. Uh-uh. She awake that whole doggone time. Ain't no way. I need to be knocked all the way the hell out. I don't want to know nothing that's going on. I just want to wake up and be snatched to capacity. That's it. But uh, if you follow her on social media, you see she got some perky D's now. Them titties are damn near up to her. They like this. I'm like, oh, he hello. <laughs> Y'all, we got a meeting of the mamas. Big Lyric G meeting with Mama Pam sack of laundry. <laughs> so you know they both gonna ride for their babies, right? They want to meet up because they know that they can be the voice of reasoning to bring the family together, right? Now, Lyric G is like, you know, I want you to um, get on your son as much as you try to get on Lyrica because your son is wrong and your son did this, your son did that. I'm like, my son didn't do anything. You can't be believing everything everybody say because you know that that summer bunny hop just be lying all the time. Lyrica G is like, no, he admitted it. He told Lyrica that he slept with a summer bunny hop. Oh, damn. He told her? Oh, damn. I don't like Mama Sack of Laundry Pam because... Regardless of what A1 does, she gonna ride for his ass the whole damn time. I don't like that. I have a son, and if my son is wrong, I'm gonna let his ass know that he wrong. I'm not finna ride for him when he wrong as hell, clear as day wrong as hell. You know what I'm saying? So, Lyrica tells Pam that, you know, I feel like we can get through whatever it is that me and you went through as long as you can apologize for the things that you have done. Now, Mama Pam tells 
Mama Lyrica, well, can you apologize to me for the things that you've done and you, you done said about me too? Of course, Mama Lyrica gonna get upset. Like, how you just gonna flip it around on me and tell me the same thing I just told you? Now, I get it. I get what Mama Pam Sakalanji was trying to say. I get it. Like, we need to apologize to each other. What she should have done was to apologize for my part, whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. Now, can I get an apology from you for your part on whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada? But that ain't how they went. And you know, they both two bullheaded, stern, rock hard ass, ass females, and they ain't finna back down. So, Lyric G got mad. Bum and Pam second laundry got mad too. She said, well, look here. I don't know why the hell I wasted my time coming here. You know what? To hell with you, Lyrica G. To hell with you. Lyrica G said, to hell with you too, Pam. And you know, don't number you. That's an old school argument. When a heifer tell you to hell with you, ah, oh, baby. That's fight words. And, and <laughs> that means it's time to get out your mace. And it's time to cut that heifer, goddamn. She said, did she say to hell with me? No heifer, to hell with you. She got mad. She walked off. Ain't nobody apologized to nobody. Y'all, they some, they are some, <laughs> they some hot ass excuses for some mamas is what the hell they are. Crazy as hell, both of them. Y'all, so the episode ends in regular VH1 fashion. K. Michelle is meeting up with Tone. She's going to sit down and talk to her um, about the concerns that she has, everything that she's been seeing on social media, whoop de whoop de yada, yada, yada. As soon as Tone comes in, sits down, they hug and they embrace K. Michelle's like, so I want to talk to you about some things. Doop, da, doop, da, boo, and then the episode ends. Just like that. VH1, y'all get on my goddamn nerves, is what you do. You get on my damn nerves. But um, hopefully y'all enjoyed this review. I'm fresh showing up out my drink. I got to go get some more prepared to do another review in just a little bit. Um, if I miss anything, leave it down below. Let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.